What's happening, YouTube? Kenny back with another how-to video coming to you straight from quarantine. Today, we're deleting the charcoal canister off my 91 Miata. Now, before you go flame me in the comment section, go watch my Instagram highlights on charcoal delete. I give you several reasons why I'm deleting it and two theories on why mine is shot and it doesn't work. So today, guys, this is getting marked out the call. I'm super excited. I've been wanting to get rid of this for some time now. I did a whole lot of research and I put it all on my Instagram, so I really recommend checking it out. But this is a how-to on just to delete it, so here we go. All we're using today is a ratchet with a few extensions and a 10 mil socket you're also gonna need a 10 millimeter wrench some pliers and you know candy always keep it OG hitting up with the most original content and so we're gonna be using some brake line benders I got these at Harbor Freights they were only eight dollars another optional is a blade get ready to have your engine bay from this to this <laughs> Okay, now let's get started. First, we're gonna take off the tubes. Easy way, these tubes, if you've never taken them off, they're gonna be seized on there. So easy way to do it is grab it with the pliers, crack it loose, then pull out. There you go. Take the hose clamp off, crack it loose, and it pops out. Next thing we wanna do is disconnect this harness. That This is the evac system right here. This is a press and pull harness, so you just press down and pull out. Next thing you wanna do is get your 10 mil socket and pop this nut loose. There's a nut underneath this. If yours wasn't seized on like mine, get your 10 mil wrench, and there's actually an entryway for you to put your wrench, and you wanna grab hold of it. If you have trouble finding it, no worries. All you wanna do is take off the bracket itself. There's holding in by two 10 mm bolts. One right there and one underneath the wire harness that we'll get to right now. First off, take this one off. Then the second one. And now your entire assembly should just bend over. It's also being held in by this zip tie clip. No problem, we're just gonna bend it enough so we can access that nut. Go ahead and get your wrench and crack it loose. Now it should come off easily by hand. Cool. Now the evac assembly should come right out. Go ahead and put your two screws back on. Go ahead and grab the last tube connected to the evac system, crack it loose, and pull out. Now the entire system should come out free. Next thing we do is we're gonna work on the bottom of this hose. Follow it down to right there. Go ahead and grab the pliers, put it around the hose clamp, and move up. Now this hose should just pull right out. Now there's one more hose at the bottom of the charcoal canister. It's a super pain to get into and there's no clothes clamps and it's super old and dry. So instead of hassling with it, we're gonna work on that nut right there. But before we do that, we're gonna remove that hose clamp right there. Again, grab your pliers, pinch the nose clamp, move the hose clamp down. And then you just pull off the hose. We have a relay right here that's a little bit in the way of that. So I'm gonna go ahead just get it loose, and now give us enough free play to move it out the way. Go ahead and get your extension and 10 mil socket. Place it down, crack it loose. Now the charcoal canister should just lift right up. Perfect. Next, we're gonna remove the bracket that was holding on the charcoal canister, and that's just held in by two 10 mil nuts. Put your socket on them. Crank them loose. Now the bracket and hose should just come right out. This bottom hose is connected into the subframe to vent out all the harmful fumes. When I was doing the how-to video on the alternator, I accidentally dropped it and broke it. But it's not a problem because I'm going to fix it. But it should go right into that hole right there. Now this valve is blocked off with this hose cap. You're going to need to block off this one too. You can find another one if we go inside the trunk and look at the tail light, we can find another one that fits there perfectly. I personally don't want to do that, so I'm going to show you what I'm going to do instead. All I did was use a blade. I cut off the end of this hose that was connected all the way back to your wiring system. After figuring out the right size, I just cut it. 
Now that other end of the hose is going to be tight to fit on. So what I like to do is get the dipstick, dab my finger on the end of that, just to get a little bit of oil residue, and I wipe it all around here. That way this hose just fits on. I start from one end and I start prying on. Just like that. Again, that's how I decided to do it. You don't have to do it the same way. Don't forget to tighten your relay back up. Most people will leave this sticking up and just put a tube connecting to the bottom of the other hose. This looks super ugly to me sticking up like that with another hose. I can still see it. I personally just don't like the way that looks. So you know we're going to hit you with the candy special. This is where the brake line banders come in. I know what you're thinking. Candy. You need to have the hose off. And it's already flared so it's not going to fit through there. Wop. Say something else. Say something else. If we look down in the core, you can see that hose where it goes. You can also see that there's already a slight bend. That's where we're going to be trying to bend it. To give us some more room to work with, these lines are all attached together and this bracket is being held in by a 10 mil bolt where my finger is touching right here. We're going to go ahead and slide our ratchet down in there and break it loose. This allows the hose to move a little bit more freely. Make sure you have your pliers open up and insert the hose right there. Just like that. Getting it as close to the bend as possible. Okay, and we're just going to close the clamp. Make sure it's on the right size, and all we're going to do is bend it by squeezing the two handles together. There we go. It's kind of hard. There you go. Call me Lightning McQueen, because ka -chow! Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, next we're going to put it back into the harness and put that 10 mil bolt back on the bracket. Little super glue fix it right up. If you didn't take it out, just push it right in. It just clicks in like that. Just like that. Click. Cool. And we're just going to slip the hose on. Go ahead, use your pliers and slip the hose clamp over the hose. Securing it. Alright, thank you guys so much for watching. You can't find this clean and delete on any kind of YouTube video, blog, website, article, forum, any of that. Just look how clean this looks. Yeah. <laughs>